Greetings. Today we're going to discuss electron configuration. And this topic sometimes confuses students, but don't you worry that in class, I promise you, in class, you will have an aha moment. And don't we all live for aha moments? At least teachers do from their students. All right, so let's get into this. We're going to discuss where electrons live, basically. You, have, you know all about the atom, uh, or a lot about the atom, and uh, we're going to discuss where they live. For example, if we want to know where somebody lives, we have to know what country they live in, and then we have to know if it's, say, it's the U.S., we have to know what state, what city, what street, what number, so we can narrow it down. So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to narrow down to find out where electrons live. All right, so the first thing we need to know is what, the, what is the principal quantum number. So the principal quantum numbers are n equals 1, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and finally 7. So there are seven principal energy levels, also called principal quantum number. Pause and write down the definitions so that then you can focus on the explanation. The sublevel is a collection of orbitals within an energy level. So there's a collection of orbitals called the S orbital. There's a collection of orbital also called the P orbital. So let me write it down here. S, P, D, and F. So that's a collection of orbitals. Then there are individual orbitals. And the individual orbital is that volume of space where two electrons can live. It's possible you can picture it like a room where, uh, say, a door where two people can live. Or there could be one student or no students at all. That's possible, too. But the room still exists. I'm going to focus on the energy levels and the sublevels, so I'm going to write them down as they appear. In the second energy level, there's, there's S and P sublevels. In the third, there's an S, P, D sublevel. And in the fourth, there's an S, P, D, F. And they kind of repeat themselves. You'll work with that a little bit. The shapes of these sublevels are S, P, these are individual orbitals now, and D and F. Notice that the S is just a sphere. And I'll, in the next little video clip, I'm going to show you what I mean by that and the size and what that represents. So let's focus on the sublevels. Specifically, I want to show you the relationship between the 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, and so on and so forth. So if we let this represent the 1s sublevel, the 2s sublevel would be a little bigger and around it. The 1s would be inside this wall. Then we would have the 2p sublevel out here, but the 3s would be here, and this all would be inside of this wall. Finally, we would have the 4S sublevel are surrounding this 3S. The 5S would be even bigger than this one, 6S and 7S, even bigger. But keep in mind that the P sublevels and the D sublevels would also be inside. We have at least the 1S, 2S, 3S, and 4S sublevels represented. Then we have the P, there's a P, X, P, Y, P, Z, which we can kind of put all together, superimposed uh, one on top of the other, and that is collectively called the P sublevel. If we superimpose these, they uh, will look something like this, like this, and one coming out at you, which is hard to, to visualize. 
when you're just looking at this two-dimensionally. And this is the D sublevel, which is even more intricate because it's one on top of the other. And then we have the F, which becomes even more intricate, which we're not going to worry too much about at this point. All right, so this is the wave mechanical model of where we think electrons live. And it can apply to all atoms. So we can apply this to every single atom. And we can explain the periodic table of elements by the similarities within these groups. And you're going to make those connections um, a little later. All right? But there are some rules we have to follow, like in everything. Pause and go ahead and copy these rules. And then I'll come back and explore. First is the Pauli exclusion principle, which says that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. We have already talked about orbitals. We've talked about energy levels, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and S, P, D, and F. And we've talked about orbitals. Now I'm going to draw the orbitals. The S is a sphere, and it has only one orbital. So each orbital will, will be represented by a box. The P has three orbitals. The D has five orbitals. And the F has seven orbitals. Now, within each orbital, the electrons must have an opposite spin. So we represent that by two arrows pointing in opposite directions. So I can have opposite directions. Let me draw them a little bigger, something like that. All right, so that means that they have, they spin in this map. Okay, try that. See if you can do it. But what this represents is that they have to be opposite in spins because if not, they would repel each other because they're electrons. They're both negatively charged and negative, two negatives would repel each other. Light charges repel. The next rule is the off ball principle. We build up, off ball is German, means building up, and we build up the electronic configuration starting at the bottom. You always have to start with the first energy level. First energy level. So we build up with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Unfortunately, they don't always go in that order, but don't worry about that now. We just have to start with number 1 level, 2, 3, 4. Hunt's rule says that electrons occupy the orbital so that the maximum number of unpaired electrons exists. All right, now I'll tell you what that represents. The school bus rule. I've heard that somewhere. So what happens is, say this is a school bus and these are the seats. I would say, all right, when one electron, we have one electron here, one electron is represented there. Okay, the next one comes here, and the next one comes here. When I get four electrons, that's when I start filling up the next. All right, it's like... Um, if there are three dorm rooms and students show up one at a time and they don't know each other, obviously the first three are going to go, oh, I'll grab the first one, will go, I'll grab that room, I'll, and then the second student comes in and grabs this room, and the third one comes in and grabs this room, but then the fourth student says, ah, uh, I got to double up. So double up with the first student right here. All right? So that's what that represents. Those are the rules. That's it. And really later on, I'm going to give you an analogy for this. The bad news is that these energy levels sometimes overlap. But don't worry, because there's a very, very cool way to do this without having to memorize where the levels are, just by using the periodic table. But we'll get to that.